Hello, and once again, welcome back to Deadly Premonition, this time for part six. So I've just slept in that shed over there for 12 or so hours. I just had a bite to eat. I got some more food from the vending machines, uh, some more lollipops and crackers. That's all I had to offer. I need to make an appointment at three o'clock this afternoon. But before that, we've got a load of hours to waste. So let's just drive around, see what else we can find or maybe who else we can find. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go and meet the townsfolk and maybe inspect their backs. Really, I, I don't know why I stopped off to sleep in the shed. If I just kept on going down the road, I would have made it back to the hotel. But, um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm a strange cat. <laughs> Let's go this way, shall we? Can you go through fences? No, no, you can't. Okay, you can, you know, damage your car a little bit, though, as it turns out. <laughs> you know what this reminds me of, actually? True Crime Streets of L.A. Or Streets of New York. I think that was another one of the games. Um, although I think the driving in that and the destruction was better. <laughs> I've got to be honest. Alright, so I'm going to go down here. I did notice that there, there could be a couple of trading cards down here. And maybe I'll want to swing by and get some more fuel for my journey. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, so rather awkwardly, this is as good as we get if we're just driving along. But we can, of course, press escape, go to the pause menu and have a look at the map properly. So, let's see. Okay, so there's a couple of things here. So I might want to just sort of, like, park up. Let's have a look. Probably should have indicated, but oh well. I'm an FBI agent. Sue me. Okay. <laughs> Why am I never where I think I should be? Uh, okay, so it looks like we need to go all the way around. We can't just step over and grab that? That's a bit of a shame. Okay, so we're gonna have to go through the maze, I guess. Let's see how that works out for us. Okay, so... What is this, a substation of some sort? No trespassing? Oh, I'll pretend I can't read. Actually, maybe York just can't read. Maybe Zach does it for him. Okay, got a medal. There you go. Some more honor. Alright, so another trading card. What's it going to be this time? Olivia Cormac. Number 22. Okay, well, that's someone we haven't met yet, as far as I know. Maybe she's going to be at this meeting that we're going to at three? Alright. Yeah, it, it's closed up. Maybe it was just the door that I could see. Or... Oh, no, no, there's definitely something here. What what we got? Uh, something important? So okay, wait. It's locked. Hmm, okay. Well, maybe the key is going to be over here? Oh, it's just a bar. Uh, nah. Can I? Can I? Oh, damn. If I was Agent 47, I would play those drums. Does it tell me who lives here? Uh, Call for someone? Doesn't really sound like you're calling for someone, honestly, but okay. And it looks like that's really the only thing we can interact with at the moment, so... Back in the car, I think. Let's keep on driving. Let's keep on exploring. Still got a few hours to go. Looks like between 9am and, and 1pm, I've got a chance to eat. I think my hunger's actually, you know, like, fine at the moment, but... Hmm, I don't know. Maybe we could find somewhere to dine out. Okay, oh, there's another one over there, in the middle of a field. <laughs> this is pretty much how I'm going to spend most of my time, I imagine. Just driving around looking for trading cards at this point. And I think the trading cards are just part of the director's cut, honestly. Alright, so let's see. Jack the- oh, Jack the Raging Bull, that bastard! We might be seeing him soon, actually, because I think I might want to get some more fuel, but... There you go. Oh, we can talk later. We will talk later. Okay. Jack's changed. Who's this? Wait, did I... Maybe I've got a trading card for you. <laughs> oh. I've never seen you here before. Look at her eyes, Zach. You in town to see some sights? Uh, I think I've already seen a few. Gina the- Gina the Rose! Didn't I get Gina's sponge or name? something? 
I'm Gina. Folks call me the Rose. I'm Francis York Morgan, FBI Special Agent. I'm investigating the death of Anna Graham. FBI? Wow, how cool. Yeah. And, ooh, I like that scar. Do you have any info on Anna or any suspicious individuals? Hmm. Uh, I hate that complex stuff. Let's have a more simple conversation. Simple? Such as? Yeah. Do you want gas or not? Well, yes, really. Hmm. Uh-huh. They like it when I put it in and they like it when I pull it out. Nice. Do you like the way I pump it? Oh boy. Oh boy. Just th <laughs> just thrust in there. All right. Oh, okay, so I can't pay her a hundred dollars to, to get some more information, it looks like. But um, I can refuel. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> was it as good for you as it was for me? Alright. Uh, I, I guess we're done, really. Although, nah, fuck it. Let's get the car washed. It's pretty cheap. Gina's sponge, right? Okay. Yep. Oh dear. Wait, that was it? You you just did the windshield and it was just in front of the driver's seat. What about the rest of it? I want my money back. <laughs> Alright, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm done. And off she goes. So based on the symbol on the map, it looks like there's actually going to be a side quest here. So maybe I do have to pay uh, Jack for... I'm not sure. We'll see. Right, yeah. <clears throat> now, of course, it's a uh, more reasonable hour. Maybe I could actually pop by and see the gunsmith or go to the milk barn place. Or maybe I could go check out the scrapyard or whatever the place was. Yeah. I mean, most places should be open. It's like half ten in the morning, right? Oh, I'm sorry, York. I'm sorry, Zach. You will get to chat eventually, but... It's still closed? Okay. Maybe I just can't get in there quite yet, you know? Hmm. Okay, well, I'll be back. At some point, I'll be back. Can we check out the milk barn? That's gonna be over here somewhere. I believe Polly said that this was worth a... worth a look. Hey, it's open! And hey, look at me, I'm a dick, parking over three spaces. <laughs> Okay. Let's have a little look, shall we? Ooh, sugar donut. Oh, I'd love one right now. Maybe I can buy one from here. Ah. Okay. Got a couple of people here. You're a suspect. Hi. So, you're the talk of the town. <sighs> Keith. Okay. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please call me York. That's what everyone always calls me. The name's Keith. A pleasure meeting you, York. Sure is a big scar. It's bigger than I thought it would be. So, Keith, hmm. I have a couple of questions about the incident. Huh? Sure, fire away, man. Do you know Anna Graham? <laughs> yeah, of course, man. I care what his buzz. Poor little Anna. She was such a nice girl. I mean, what kind of sicko would do that to her? Well, I'm here to catch that sicko. Hmm. Listen, even the smallest piece of information might be useful to me. If there's anything you noticed or want to let me know, contact me. Okay, will do, bro. You got my cooperation, FBI. Another thing. I'll be frequenting your store during my stay here. Right. So I'll see you around. <laughs> sure thing, bro. We got what you need. So drop in any time. <laughs> I might have to take you up on that service fairly soon. So, okay. Uh, what about you? Uh, they're not suspects. I don't know how you know that, but they're not. They're just shoppers. Wait, who are you, though? FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. And you are? Lily Ingram. My husband owns the convenience store, and we have two sons. Right. 
I like to think that I'm just a regular wife in a regular family. But you're not. Aside from the point that our sons were the first witnesses to the crime scene. Isaac and Isaiah, right. pretty calm considering their involvement in such a big murder case. <laughs> you think so? I'm glad to hear that. Anyway, if I looked all bleak and gloomy, I think it would hurt our business. Uh... Agent Morgan, about that scar... Yes? Uh, Lily, please don't call me that. Call me York, if you can. People have been calling me York for a long time. You're a silly one. No, not at all. No, he is. I'm just a regular special agent. <laughs> mm, I doubt it. So what were you about to say, Lily? Huh? About my scar? Um, I'm sorry. I seem to have forgotten. Oh. It's because you said something silly. <laughs> I see. Well, if you remember anything important, just let me know. I will. I'll probably be making use of your store during my stay here. So I'll see you from time to time. Okay, I'll see you soon then. Alrighty, okay. So it looks like you might have some sort of side quest for me to get on with, so... Hi there. Let's see. We do get our supplies from the city, so you should have what you need, no problem. Just the right size for finding things. Okay. There's some stuff he'll probably forget to offer you. Okay, so there's like two people I can talk to for different things. You're a very understanding woman, yes. Anyway, Keith works better when he's comfortable. When it works well, that lightens the load on me. Hmm, clever strategy. <laughs> I don't think I can stop being silly. <clears throat> I guess, yeah, let's see what she's got. Oh, right. I uh, wasn't actually expecting sickles and golf clubs to be sold here. Uh, coffee, yeah, yeah. Stabilizers, flares, I guess. Cigarettes, lollipops, crackers, yes. Onions, eggs, okay. Oh, sugar donuts. I saw that in the loading screen. Maybe I'll... Maybe I'll grab a couple. I don't know. What else have we got? Can of pickles, smoked salmon, country ham, turkey sandwich. <sighs> That is an expensive sandwich. What the fuck? That is actually what I ate to uh, to get my hunger back up to this level. That's a really expensive sandwich. Country ham as well. Moderate amount, large amount of hunger. So <laughs> I've got to I've got to get a rod and do some fishing at some point, right? Let's let's do it now. Yeah, I've acquired a rod, and I guess I'm going to want some bait as well. Okay. Mm-hmm, okay, just normal worms. So there's different worms as well, different kind of baits. And I don't know if I want a turkey sandwich that bad. I think I've already got some smoked salmon, which is going to be a moderate amount of my hunger. And I've got some pickles, and I've got loads of other stuff, so... I think that's enough for now. I'll quit shopping, yeah. Okay, let me just make sure there's no... more... suspects around here. Storage room, we shouldn't peek in without permission. Right, oh. <laughs> Especially not when she's watching. You're not a suspect, no. I think it's just the two owners, really. The Ingrams. Okay, well, we checked in, so let's check out. Where to now, eh? I think someone did mention that if I do want time to pass without having to sleep or just piss around, uh, I can go into the inventory, check the items, and I can smoke cigarettes. Here we go, that's what I was waiting for. Okay, Zach. I've been thinking about what movie I'd like to watch next. Oh. And finally, I've made a decision. It's always hard to narrow it down just to one movie. Yeah. But I've put a lot of thought into this. And I'm sure you'll agree with me. Go on. 1975. Directed by Steven Spielberg himself. I don't know if I know that one. The grandfather of panic movies. Set in a small town oh. in Massachusetts. Jaws? That movie made me stay away from the beach for years. It's gotta be Jaws, right? I was always afraid that a hand might come floating up. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? I do. Yep. Yeah. It's Jaws. Damn right. The underwater camera work accompanied by that John Williams music. I'd never been that scared by a movie before. But the best thing about it is that it isn't just another panic movie. The mayor who won't close the beach even when there are so many victims. Chief Brody putting the citizens' lives above all else. Exactly. The film gave a lot of time to the dispute and friction between them. It certainly had a lot of messages for a two-hour film. 
That's probably another reason why it was such a record-breaking hit. It is a classic. One of my regrets in life is that I didn't see it at the movie theater. I guess I was still just a child back then. Mm. But still, I wanted to taste that terror in real time. Ah, oh, it's closed. That reminds me, Zack. Did you know this one? Jaws also appears in another movie that was produced by Spielberg. The second Back to the Future. Oh? It was directed by Robert Zemeckis, who later made Forrest Gump. That's also a masterpiece, of course, but we'll discuss that another time. So, the scene where Jaws appears... Go on. ...is right after Marty McFly goes 30 years into the future. He passes by a movie theater and is attacked by a holographic oh, shark. Oh, right, yeah! Marty is shocked, of course, but looking closer, he sees the words, Jaws Part 19. <laughs> the director is credited as Steven Spielberg Jr. In reality, there were actually only four Jaws movies, but it was still a great joke. <laughs> 30 years from 1985 would be 2015. We'll be there pretty soon. We will indeed, yes. I wonder what life would be like by then. <laughs> well, people will still be playing this silly little game. I do like their conversations between one another. That's why I was staying in the car. It's a shame that the bar is closed, because I do, do want to go in there, but... I have to go a little bit later on. Zach, is there something here that you want to check out? We need to be at the community center by 1500 today. You do, but you've Just still got like four and a half hours. talking in front of all those people. Yeah. What do you think, Zach? What do I think? I think you've just picked up number 56, record player. Oh, I didn't... Oh, I interrupted their conversation. I broke his train of thought. Am I peeking again? I'm peeking again. Right, this is getting a little bit creepy, to be honest, York. But go on. Okay, well, there's some honor there. There's a piano set up. All right. Oh, that's, um, yeah, this is the bar from that beginning cutscene, I suppose, where I think I saw Tom crying. Speaking of which, I might be able to meet him for a meal. <laughs> Thank you for the observation bonus. I probably shouldn't be getting money for that, but here we are. Okay, so... Looks like there is another trading card. Maybe I could sort of pop by and grab that. Don't crash! There we go. Over here? Around the other side of the building? Okay. Here we Ooh, careful, careful. There it is, I see it. Okay, oh, it's on the basketball court. Right. Oh, no, 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 no. Later. Later. <laughs> Again, on the other side of the road, but I, I understand, I suppose. Through here? Oh, it's locked? Or it's shut up from the other side or something? What's going on? Let's look somewhere else. Okay, uh... Do I go around the long way? Is there another opening? Or maybe I could... Go around the other side, around the building, or... Oh god, I don't know. I don't know. Let's see if we can meet up with Tom. I'm kind of curious as to how this is going to go. And then maybe I'll check out that sandwich. Because, why the hell not? I got food on the brain. And then maybe I'll drive up to, uh, to where we need to meet the people at 3pm. I'm probably going to be way too early, but, uh, well. That's what the cigarettes are for, I suppose. Here we are. Oh, good, it's open. Nice to know, yeah. <laughs> I'm really not following the rules of the road. Okay. Well, it seems like an odd place to do it, but yeah, let's go in. Okay, so let's see. Where do I need to go? What do I need to do? Thomas McLean, okay, so he's in the office. I guess, yeah, let's just go speak to him and see what he wants to do. He wants to get some lunch together. Lunch, yeah, exactly. Hello? Um, yes, I do. You can throw something together? Go on, yeah. Nice. So, what exactly do you want to talk to everyone about? This case goes deeper than you think. The town folk may have heard about the murder, but they don't understand it. It's a very dangerous situation, 
and I need to warn them properly. I hope most of them are decent enough to come. No problem there. Emily has made all the arrangements. I've told everyone to gather around between 1500 and 1700. Great. Okay. Reminds me of a film I saw recently. A town is under attack by aliens. Here we go. And so the mayor calls all citizens to the town hall to warn them. However, seeing this, the aliens attack the hall and wipe them all out together. Is mm. that relevant, Agent York? We'll see it three. The kill is fantastic. They used a combination of balloons and meat sauce for exploding heads. <sighs> Those aliens start firing their death rays and heads start popping. Like splat. Really quite something. Agent York, <laughs> some of us are trying to eat here. I know, Emily, I'm one of them. Well, anyway, your cooking is the best, Thomas. Thank you. Nope, no problem. <laughs> sure, all right. Uh... Fantastic, so I got money. I actually got money back. I didn't have to pay them. Great, great. And Okay, are we going to check the weather again? Yeah, let's check the weather. It looks like rain until noon. Okay, let's have a late breakfast today. Rain until noon. I have been told, actually, that when it does rain, I really should make an effort to see if I can find that flower for George, because apparently the reward from that is going to be really good and it's going to help me out throughout the rest of the game. So, yeah, when I do see it raining, I'm just going to be driving around looking for a flower symbol on the map. Okay, this one looks like it's going to be an easy card to get. Right in front of the bank, eh? Oh, right in front of the ATM, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, park responsibly for once. So what's this is going to be? Oh, this is Lily! Right, okay. She's 18. Nice. Well, she's probably a bit older than that. But. Um, yeah, let's get back in. I do still kind of want to check out the sandwich. Obviously, I don't need to eat. I didn't need to eat before I had lunch, but still. When in Rome, or when in Greenvale. Oh man, I wish I could turn properly. Oh, this is this is horrific. Look at the fucking look look at the wheels. Okay. Well, it's open. What was that? The A the A and G Diner. Right next to Studio G V. Okay. <laughs> now where am I gonna spawn? Where's Zach, it gonna is be? There's something here that you want to check out. Oh, we right need here. to be at the community center by fifteen hundred today. I know, I Just know. Just think of talking front of all those people. I know. What do you think, Zach? It's going to be fun. It's going to be real fun. Okay. Oh, what's this? Uh, co oh, someone's just left some coffee down. Oh, no, no, sorry. It's a trading card for coffee. 43. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if I can read the coffee in the trading card like I can read the coffee. Everywhere else, but all right. Doesn't look like there's any suspects here. Uh, well, Michael and Harry. Hello. Okay, you're new. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. And you are? Olivia. Olivia Cormack. Right, I've got your card. Nick's wife. I haven't spoken to Nick either. Olivia. Now that's a lovely name. Do you think so? You're the only one who's ever said that other than my father and Nick. Oh, it's a very good name. You should be proud of it. There's that famous singer too, isn't there? From the 70s? She's actually from England, but she's got this really strong image of being an American pop singer. Uh-huh. That's it. Olivia Newton-John. <laughs> you know of her, right? Mm. Greece. She's not only a successful singer, she's successful as an actress, too. Personally, I really liked Xanadu back in 1980. She played a cute fairy and just looked amazingly stunning. It's hard to believe she was 32 at the time. Right, Zach? Uh, sorry, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Really? Join the club. That's a shame. It's a big club. You should watch it when you get a chance. You'll learn to love your name. Oh. Okay. Okay, yeah, all right. If you say so. So, Olivia, do you know anything about Anna that might be helpful to me? Oh, she was a bright and lovely girl. 
I can't believe she... Did she ever look worried or anxious? No, not really. I just... I, I can't believe it, really. I'm never going to see her again, am I? She was here with us. So happy and energetic just a few days ago. She and I... We were getting all excited over some new dessert. Thank you, then. If you remember anything else, let me know. Okay. And, of course, there's Michael and there's Harry, who I suppose we have to talk to, you know, together. They're having a giggle about something. Harry, can I speak to you alone? Uh, you should try their best dish with the apple and the gravy sauce. It's much more than just a garnish, and not having it would be your loss. So says Mr. Stewart. Apparently that was worth $16. Okay, well, I can't speak to them right now. What about you? You must be Nick. Oh. Hey, I'm working here. You can't just stroll into a chef's kitchen. Well, I just did. Then perhaps you would give me your permission to enter. Yeah. No. Get the hell out of here. Uh-oh. <laughs> Zach, everyone has their own sanctuary. Let's leave him in his. Okay, well... Uh, maybe I could meet you properly at the meeting. Uh, yeah, maybe I could buy something here, but I don't think it's really worth it. So... Okay. Let's go to this meeting, shall we? I, I just keep getting distracted. There's a lot of distractions in this game. Like Thomas's biscuits. Uh, hmm. <laughs> I know there was one way to go. I don't know if it was this way, though. Shit. I may have made the wrong turn. Oh no, I can see the road, I can see the road. And I'm just going to plow on through. There we go. Let, whoa, careful. Nice. Yep, alright. Little bit of a shortcut there. Yeah, so I'm a little bit early, but, you know, that's no bad thing. Careful, careful. There we are. Yeah, best to get here early and sort of set up, don't you think? So this is it. This is where we're going to have the meeting. So if I go here now, does it just... Is it going to make me wait here, or...? Okay. Too early, right? Zach, Emily arranged for yeah, people okay. to come between 1500 and 1700. We can't do anything here right now. Let's come back at the right time. Mm hmm. Okay, we could do that. Uh. Oh. Oh, he's. Oh, right. Got you. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, so it looks like I've parked over there. Right, this might be a good time for me to see how these cigarettes work. Don't try this at home. Uh, don't get addicted. But still, in this game at least, uh, I suppose they're going to be in items. Heavy cigarettes. Use. Right. Oh, yeah, you can see the time in the background. And I can just stop it when I want, yeah? So, three o'clock will do. There you go. And now it's one past three. Okay. Not bad. Yeah. Oh, look at that. So many more cars. Sweet. All right, well, yeah, let's go in and... Let's see if we can inspect some bags. Greenvale Community Center. Mm hmm Now that's an impressive building. The clock tower is impressive too. Quite a lot of people here. Zach, I haven't been on stage like this since elementary school. <laughs> I'm not some tree in the wind this time either. Well, that was a tough role. I was a piece of scenery. Bright red tree. <laughs> really? Thank you all for coming today. Getting right down to business. Agent Morgan from the Federal Bureau of Investigations wishes to speak with you. Good afternoon. I'm Special Agent Francis York Morgan. 
Some of you are already aware by now of the tragic murder of Anna Graham. Mm -hmm. Truly a heinous, terrible crime. I've come to this town to solve the murder of this young, beautiful girl. And to bring the one responsible to justice. Could it be him? Could it be her? Maybe it's Thomas. Maybe it's them. Unfortunately, incidents like these have a tendency to happen again. I ask to have you gathered here so I can share some advice in order to minimize the risk of further fatal incidents. Stay away from people in raincoats. Firstly, please, stay away from any dark, dangerous, isolated places. Those of you with children, especially of Anna's age, please Oof. guide your children away from such places at all costs. Secondly, avoid going out when it is raining. Now I've heard the folklore story of the raincoat killer. There is a chance that the murderer is mimicking the story. There's definitely someone in a raincoat Women who wants to kill you. Be especially careful. I would hate to see more victims. No. No. Oh. Hello, heels. Who's this? Carol McLean, the bar owner and singer. Ah, the bar that was closed. Who's the fashionably late one? That's Carol, Thomas's sister. She owns a bar. Thomas's sister. Uh, excuse me. So, as I have said, avoid going outside when it is raining. Young women should be especially careful. Report anything or anyone suspicious immediately. The murderer will be caught and brought to justice. But you must all remain on guard until we do so. That's all I have to say. Thank you. That was it? That was it? Okay, well, sure. An email would have worked, really, but... No, no. Uh, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. I want to talk to you. Maybe you most of all. I want to see what you look like beneath that mask. Oh, wait, what? Has he got something to say? When paying for our sins, we must not frown. The loss of Anna was for that debt. All I can really see is that coffee over there. Can I go grab that? When purple fog covers our town, we'll all wander in hell, I fret. So says Mr. Stewart. Yes. So he does. And off he goes. Yeah, that was weird. Sure knows how to steal thunder. Huh. Well then, Zack. Let's ask some questions before all these guys leave. Yes, I want to see your backs. <laughs> okay, so we got George, we got Thomas. Looks like Emily's down there and there's a bunch of people. And they haven't left yet. Okay, well, um, I guess let's say hi to George. Let's go through everyone. Agent Morgan, here's your chance to get to know some of the townsfolk. Mm. Don't let it go to waste. I won't. Okay, that was short and sweet. Alright, uh, Thomas, so your sister's not there anymore, but she was. Agent York, your words really made me think about Anna's death again. How could one do such a terrible thing? I'm still in shock. <sighs> Thomas, I forgot to ask. You don't have a tattoo on your back, do you? Uh, tattoo? Oh. Well, I do, actually. But why? Really? Could you show it to me, please? What? Now? Here? 
Uh, we could go somewhere more private, I yes, guess, but... please. This is vital for our investigation. It can't be him. Okay. If it's gonna help you any. Uh, I guess it could be. Let's see. It's gonna be a big picture of Steve-O. <laughs> uh, oh no. Uh -huh. Well, I'm wondering who G is now, but aside from that... <laughs> G? Did it tell you anything? It told me that you didn't kill Anna. Okay. Of course not. What are you saying? <laughs> G. Hmm. Gina? You ought to see that tattoo, Zack. A big heart with an arrow through it and love G in the center. <laughs> Could be. I don't know when he got that done, but we've all been through the 80s. <laughs> all right. But the main, the main point is that he didn't kill Anna. He's not the one in the photo. Oh, I, I think I actually can go grab that. Oh, coffee. Oh, hey. Quite a performance. Mysterious and very poetic. Hmm. But I don't think many of your audience appreciated it. Mr. Francis York Morgan. Yes. The purple fog appears with rain, soiling and ruining our town. The evil does not drain. Find out why the town is soiled. Remove the source from which it boiled. Then and only then your case is solved. But for this to happen, to solve the crime, the proper must do the proper at the proper time. <laughs> it is not yet mine, that is, Mr. Stewart's time, not mine. But if you, Mr. York, find the right timing to chat with me, that is, with Mr. Stewart, may that be. Informative and fruitful, you will see. So says Mr. Stewart. So, Harry, you know something. Evidently. But there's some reason why you can't tell me yet. Is that what you're trying to say? Is it because George is overhearing everything? Cut the poetic rubbish, Harry, and tell us what you know. Hmm. We can force you to talk, you know. Mr. Francis York Morgan. Yes? Pay close attention to the signs, <laughs> the omens, and the premonitions. Oh, I will. Small they may be, they still are finds, and helpful to your investigations. So says Mr. Stewart. Thanks for the warning, Harry. But don't worry. Me and Zack, we know what we're doing. Mmm. Kind of. And they're gone. Richard and Quint. Apparently they're just out there. Okay. Uh, right, yeah, this is what I came down here for, actually. It was the black coffee. Take it. Yeah. All right. Uh, so let's see. Have a look on the map. Oh, okay. So we've got quite a few people here. Carol McLean. Someone we haven't met yet, the suspect. Okay, this, so we've got the two Duns. Oh, wow. Okay. Another suspect. There's Polly. Wow, there's loads of people. Okay. All right. Well, um, let's talk to Emily, and then we'll talk to Carol, I guess, and then we'll sort of... Well, I guess we'll talk to everyone, right? So, yeah, let's start with Emily. I don't think any of these people are suspects, but they are very obediently sitting down, even though the meeting is over. Yeah. Weird. All sort of robotically staring. My god. Oh god, you three must be brothers. You're triplets or something. What the fuck? Emily, what's going on? Agent York, are you finished asking questions yet? Oh no, no. When you're done, let me know. Okay. We'll all get dinner. Again? I think I've eaten enough today, really, but... Ah, sure, why not? Let's go out here. Okay, so Carol's meant to be over here? Hey, what's this? Oh, fantastic! Just in case I wanted to do any more waiting around. <laughs> there you go, they're already coming in handy. Is that the actual time? Is it just gone for? Anna was an airhead. What do you mean? Are you saying she was killed because she was an airhead? Or are you saying that she was an airhead for being killed? 
I'm sure she's still an airhead even in heaven. She changed her hair every day. If she lost a pound, she'd be ecstatic, gain one, and she'd almost be in tears. She broke many, many plates every day at the diner, and she'd always have a smile on her face, always having fun. Everyone looked at her and knew she was a cute, adorable, loving airhead. <laughs> But they would be smiling right along with her. I wouldn't be surprised if the angels smiled with her too. <laughs> okay. Weird. Wasn't expecting anything like this. It's like I'm profiling. Isaac and Isaiah said that Anna was a fairy of the forest. A goddess. Right. And if she goes... Oh! Oh no. <laughs> I might be heading that way too. Alright, well that was... something. So yeah, that was profiling. Not bad, eh? No one there. And it looks like she's left, but... If you go around here... Okay, there we go. There's the two Duns, Quint and Richard. Who's this? Good evening, Agent. Uh, okay, he's an insomniac. That might explain the look. He's a gravekeeper. Good evening, Mr... Brian. The gravekeeper. <clears throat> Brian. Mr. Brian. Mr. Brian. I like the retro look. Auditioning for... Little Grave on the Prairie? Hmm. <laughs> Anna. Oh, she was... So beautiful. Too soon. <clears throat> too... Too soon to go to the grave. So sad. So sad. I totally agree. That's why I'm here, looking for the one who did it. Were you close to her? Is that a yes? Anna. <laughs> her smile. So warm. Right. Anna. Blonde hair. So bright. And off he goes. There's a graveyard somewhere in town, Zach. I'm not excited about the idea, but... Maybe we should at least check it out. Yeah, let's keep an eye on that guy. If he didn't do it, he probably knows something. Or at least that's the that's the vibe I'm getting. Uh, Quint, Richard, I see you're back on ground level again. Quint, you're here too. I didn't think you were the town meeting kind of guy. A friend of mine was killed, you know, man. I'm not letting this one go quietly. I'll do anything to help you catch the scumbag who did this. Thank you. But vigilance is not justice. Nothing good will come from desiring simple revenge. Oh, come on, I'm not that stupid. But I'm frustrated a bit just thinking that there's nothing I can do about it. We each have a role, purpose in life, a raison d'etre. Don't forget that. I know, I know. Just don't preach to me, you're sounding like my old man. <laughs> Who's eavesdropping on this entire thing? Zack, wow. I'm in shock like a weasel in an electric chair. <laughs> he just made me realize that I must be getting old. What sort of analogy is that? A weasel in an ele Okay. Well, yeah, I never thought I'd think about that. Uh, Richard! Hey! So, finding your way around okay? Yes, pretty much. But some people are hard to get along with. <laughs> people problems, huh? I thought city folks were used to things like that. There's lots more people in the city than there are here. Well, that's true. But I started simplifying things a bit. Here's my new way of thinking. It's simple, really. There's only three types of people. Criminals, victims, and investigators. Everyone else are just... Vegetables. <laughs> vegetables called other people. You really are strange. Yes, he is. So, yeah. The, uh, the room with Emily and George and everything, they're just... There's loads of vegetables in there, I suppose. <laughs> All right. All oh, right, Usher, and uh, is that Freckly Fiona? Okay, well, I, I suppose I can catch up with you two. Agent York, you make any progress? Eh, a little bit. Of course, plenty. Uh, tell me, Usher, when is Anna's funeral? Mm, that's still undecided. Sally isn't really in any condition to do it right now. Her mother? I don't see her here. Yeah, that's right. Anna was her sole reason for living, after her husband was deceased. Well, she's probably huddled up at home. Hmm. And I should probably take some time to pay her a visit. Definitely. Well, yes, you should. 
And I'd appreciate it if you could, too. Uh, but don't go too hard on her, okay? Okay. All right. Yeah, I will do. So there's, you know, there's a few places that I should probably check out, like the graveyard and and her place. Hey, Fiona. Are you getting closer to catching the murderer? I'm looking at them. Hello again, Fiona. Good to see you here. Well, Dr. Johnson told me to be here. He said it would be important. Well, that was good advice. He may be young, but he seems like a wise man. Oh, and he's a very hard-working person, too. Everyone thinks he's some kind of weirdo, <laughs> but I don't think so at all. Isn't he People just like three... People don't understand yeah. <laughs> why he's in the autopsy room all day, but I do. He's doing research to make the world a better place in the future. You know, he already made a fortune in L.A. with his career. Oh. I did not know that. No. You didn't? Oh, the doctor is a very rich man. He has a really big house over by the lake. Ooh. Amazing, Zach. He must be loaded. Rich and young. A perfect combination. Mm -hmm. But you don't get that feeling from him at all, do you? He doesn't show it. That's one of the things I like best about him. He's still well, pretending not to hear. Well, oh. if it weren't for you. Thanks for the valuable information, Fiona. <laughs> You've been caught. <laughs> yep, yeah, okay. Alright, well there you go. There's two more people that we've uh, spoken to. Who are you? Haven't met you before. No? Was that Sergeant? Master Sergeant? So you're the FBI agent, are you? The General, okay. The Scrapyard. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. I'm the general. I fought for my country in the Vietnam War. A real-life war hero. So why are you living here? Soldier, this is my hometown. After a man returns from war, there's no place to go other than his hometown. Your little speech, you mentioned the raincoat killer. Was that a problem? You imbecile. The raincoat killer's no myth, not mere folklore. Not a fairy tale. It's based on actual events that happen in this town. Oh. It is. I'm interested. Yeah. Can you tell me more about this? <laughs> you kids today don't even know how to ask for something right. Soldier, if you want to hear more, you come to my office. Uh, okay. Well, it was closed before, but... Hmm. He literally exudes raw power, Zack. Despite the credibility issues, we should give him a visit. One thing, though calls himself a general, but isn't that a sergeant's uniform? Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I, well, yeah, I think so. Anyway, speaking of soldiers and veterans and stuff, it looks like over there we got another medal. And there's a, a bunch more people to speak to. There you go. How's it going, Polly? I'm sorry I couldn't join you for breakfast this morning. Mr. Morgan, you're quite an impressive public speaker. Really? Thank you, Polly. You reminded me a little of a play I saw when I was younger. What kind of play? I'm talking about back when this place was still called the Mercury Theater. When I was young, I used to come here often with my husband. God rest his soul. We'd come on the weekend to see the latest play. Uh-huh. He'd always pretend to be uninterested. But I could tell he was excited inside. He was just one of those kind of guys, really, thinking about it now. Really, Polly. So what's your favorite play? Oh, well, I like so many. There was one in particular, but I can't recall the name anymore. Oh, it was a very famous one, too. Something okay. by Shakespeare? Hamlet or something? Like oh, um... No, no, nothing. One more bell that doesn't ring anymore. I've always been forgetful about the plays we used to see anyway. Oh, and my husband would get angry at me for forgetting what we saw. What if she's the raincoat killer? for hours retelling what, what the twist. play was about. His eyes were so sparkling, like a happy young boy. I see. So, what's your favorite play? Oh, I almost forgot, Mr. Morgan. We're going to have another guest soon. Oh? I have to get back and get things ready. Sorry for having to hurry away. I'll see you back at the hotel. 
Wow. All right. Zach, I think she could embarrass the toughest of the FBI's interrogators. She successfully avoided answering my question, Zach. Amazing. Hmm. That's some, uh, that's some talent right there. And off she goes. Okay, so, who are you? Is that for me? Oh, boy. <laughs> Always start with the badge. Oh, my. My pot is getting cold. Oh. Roaming Sigourney. Uh, the pot lady. Oh, God, really? Lynch, hey, sue these people. Mister, my pot is getting cold. <laughs> you are... Who? What are you saying? I'm Sigourney. Sigourney. Right. Sigourney. Okay. Now, what is the matter? Can you explain? No time for chatting. I need to hurry. My pot is getting colder. Oh, you're useless. Why did you bring it? Zach, we've met all sorts today, but... Really, she takes the cake. Amazing. <laughs> and that's it. That's it. That's all we need to know. She's just going to be there holding the pot. Well, she's not a log lady. She's not a lady of the lamp, but... Okay. Gina, Jack, I suppose I should just talk to everyone, right? So, hello, shithead. I'm nothing to say to you. I haven't asked you anything yet, Jack. Shut it! I might open up if you introduce me to... I don't know, a Ben Franklin or two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a dick. Uh, Guess there's always someone like him in every town. Gina, how's it going? Thanks for the car wash. Hello again, Agent York. How are you? Good, thanks. And you? Oh, I'm feeling pretty good today. Well, that's good to hear. Do you have any information that could help me out? Information? Sounds difficult and not my kind of conversation. <laughs> Anyways, you should come by the gas stand again. Sure I will. I'll give you the best service in town. Giggity. Zach, perhaps you can tell me. Why did she bother coming here? Good question. Just to make up the numbers, I suppose. Right, Jim, Jim, how's it going? I haven't seen you in a while. Jim, thanks for your help in the forest. How are Isaac and Isaiah? They're fine. Good. They really seem to love their grandpa. Well, I guess they do, son. I want to keep them away from the filth of the material world as much as I can. Their mother agrees, which is why she lets me take care of them so often. And that's why I want you to solve this case quickly and go home. Those rumors about that scar of yours do more damage than good around here. Really? I guess I reek of the material world, don't I? I have to, in order to do my job. But I understand what you mean. I'd think the same if I was born in a place like this, Zach. Okay. Alright, well we've spoken to everyone around here, it looks like. Uh, so who have we got? Oh, there's the Ingrams again, I suppose. Looks like Keith's Tourette's is still playing up. Hey, York! You were rocking it large up there! Was I? I haven't been on stage like that since elementary school. You made me think, man, like, things can't go on like this. We need, like, some action or something. I was pretty psyched up, you know, before you got on stage. I was like, dude, a real psycho in town! <laughs> pretty sweet gig. But now, I mean, dude... Dude. That lunatic could be any one of us, man. Could be. I don't want to think of that whack job coming after my family. Makes me shudder all over, man. It was way too heavy. You'll catch him. Right, FBI? Of course. But you need to be able to take care of those you love, too. You're right, man. Right on the level. I need to do what's right for my family, man. You lit my soul, man. Thanks, FBI. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Okay, well, you can uh, continue tapping along, playing some air guitar and everything. I'll talk to your wife, Lily. Hey, Lily. Agent York, your speech frightened some of us a little. You should work on being more sensitive with words when talking to groups. Really? I tried my best to be gentle. So, have you noticed anything strange or out of place recently? Hmm. Just Becky, really. She works part-time at the store. Oh, yeah? She's been acting strange recently. Strange? How? I took the boys along to visit her house today. 
I was just worried, you know, because she hasn't come into work at all after that incident. But she took in the boys and told me to wait outside. Something about a special secret between just the three of them. Oh, yeah? I just couldn't understand it. Now that's interesting. It is. Thank you, Lily. Perhaps we should give Becky a visit tomorrow, Zach. Perhaps we should. As well as the graveyard, the scrapyard, and talking to Anna's mother. There's quite a few things that we can get on with. Who are you? Is that snakeskin? I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, call me York. Wesley, owner of the gun store called Panda Bear. Ah. People around here call me the gunsmith. Right. Why are you never open? <laughs> Was there something you want to ask me? Yeah. How do you make a living running a gun store in a place like this? I'd be worried because there can't be that many customers. Worry gives a small thing a big shadow. I do gunsmith work in my shop, too. If you got the skills, the customers find you. All you need is a network. I hope so. The toolbox? Okay. Here's what I've got. Oh, oh okay, we can do it now. This is the Panda Bear list. Okay, uh, well, I can get some more bullets. I can get another flare. I can even buy lollipops from you. Now, I've actually already got the submachine gun. I don't know if I'll need another one. I guess there's a durability thing to it, so maybe I'll need to buy another one, but uh, I, I think I'm good for now, to be honest. Mm, actually, those flares could come in fairly handy, I think. Yeah, just in case I do run out of gas in the middle of nowhere and I do need a pickup. I don't want to run, you know, back to town, so there you go. Okay, but that'll do. You've got quite a selection here. No wonder people come from all around. Even today, a customer paid me to go to Seattle for some help. Oh, yeah? I just got back. I see. Ah, that's why it was closed. Well, I'll be sure to visit your store sometime. I'd like for you to take a look at my gun. Understood. Look forward to it. The shop will be open again tomorrow. It's usually open from 2000 to 0600. Oh, what? See you then. All right. Bit of a night owl then. Sure. So, the first time I checked it, it would have actually been open. If he wasn't in uh, Seattle. Right, yeah. Nick, is it? I'm U.S. Special Agent Francis York Morgan. He's worse than I'm Phoenix Wright with the that owner badge. Of the diner that Anna worked at? That's right. Yeah, Nick Cormack, okay. I'd like to ask you a few questions about Anna Graham. Did you notice anything strange about her prior to the incident? <laughs> Nick, are you hiding something? Mm. No, nothing. No? You sure? I'm sorry, but I don't like repeating myself. Okay. All right. I'm surprised I haven't mentioned wanting to see people's backs yet. Maybe there's going to be some sort of police lineup later. Can you tell me if you noticed anything strange about Anna before the incident? Well, I'm not sure if this will be of any help, but... Anything, no matter how small, could be of help. Well, you see, the diner closes when it rains. Uh -huh. Many shops do that around here, as you might have heard. Anyway, Anna always seemed unfocused the day after it rained, and came in late, too. It oh, was yeah? almost as if she used up all her energy the day before. <gasps> Come to think of it, that was really strange. Mm. Did that legendary monster really kill her? It wasn't a monster. Just a criminal. Criminal I'm going to catch and bring to justice. Was it a single person, though? That's what I'm wondering about. To oh. Agent Morgan, I'd like to let everyone go home now. Okay, well, I think I spoke to Let's everyone. go outside. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I think... These are the key players here. I don't know if we're going to meet anyone else, apart from maybe Becky and the mother. I'm just trying to figure out who exactly tried to, you know, swing the axe at me. Who was dressed up as the raincoat killer? Maybe it was Jim. Don't know. 
Okay. All right. Well, there you go. That was worth doing. So we did meet the majority of the people in town. That's good. 260 on top of that. So $8,538. Not bad, eh? Okay, let's save. And let's continue playing. A little bit longer. Let's see what other mischief I can get up to. Well then, Agent York, do you have any plans for this evening? I was going to head back to the hotel and go over my notes. I need to contact HQ and give a progress report too. Okay, and let's call it a day here. Sounds good. Hmm. Contact my office when you finish your report. We'll pick you up tomorrow morning. Diane, the owner of the art gallery, should be back soon. Right, All right Diane. Then, let's do that. Oh, Pete, of course. Uh, hold on, Agent York. We're going out to eat at Nick's diner. Ah. Would you like to come with us? The diner? That might be nice. <laughs> Thomas is a great cook, but Nick is the real deal. No visit to Greenvale is complete without eating at the A&G. A very appealing proposition. Zach, what do you think? I say do it. go back to the hotel after eating dinner. Exactly, Or go yeah. directly back to the hotel. You decide, Zach. Well, let's do both. Let's eat with them first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. The amount that I'm eating, I'm going to get real fat real quick. Okay. Yeah, I missed my chance earlier, but here we are. I've been sheriff here for a long time now. And this is the worst murder I've ever seen. Our town is a little odd in some ways, but it's usually a peaceful place. We had our fair share of cases, but just the regular stuff. The whistling. A high Why? school kid shoplifting from the milk barn, maybe? Or some hot-headed kids fighting, fueled on liquor? Nothing more than that. Agent York, what kind of cases have you dealt with in the past? Not much different from those you've just mentioned. The case I was on until last month, well, yeah. the guy killed seven girls in a three-month period. Oof. He sawed their heads off from the neck and took them back to his house. He cleaned <laughs> the skulls up and oh. used them as utensils in his daily life to eat from or as a urine cup. Mm. He hated women. That was his way of dealing with it. He'd fill skulls with ice, cola, and rum. Then he'd down it in one gulp. <laughs> For him, that was a holy ritual. The question of his mental state was the pivotal point in the court case. Oh, man. I think they're regretting asking. For me, he was insane. A hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Drinking from the skulls. Well, that is one thing. It certainly is. But those he had used to relieve himself, oh dear. he would then just use them to drink from, too. <laughs> yeah, that was too much for me. It's just not sanitary. <clears throat> no, it's not. <clears throat> not sanitary. Uh, that's probably not the problem for most of us. What else? Ah, yes. An ingenious law school student raped over 800 victims. 800? That was a nasty one. Thank you, Agent York. 800? Well, let's talk about something else. Fucking you hell. don't want to hear anymore? That's a shame, isn't it, Zach? I was just about to get to the good part, too. <laughs> Sounds like you live in a totally different world. I mean, you're like an elite agent who just jumped out from a movie or something. In your eyes, we must look like we're just playing cops and robbers. Ugh, I give up. I can't compete with you. Don't say that, Emily. The cases you have solved are all full-fledged crimes. A crime is a crime. Size doesn't matter. There is no big and small. Crimes always have a, a criminal and a victim. No victim will ever welcome a crime, no matter what its size. So fundamentally, there is no difference in size. Just severity, I guess. Well said, Agent Morgan. We work day and night to preserve peace and order in this town. You understand that, right? 
Of course. But still, I don't view shoplifting and Anna's murder as the same level of crime. Well, no. Me, neither. I never even dreamt that such a thing could ever even happen in this town. <laughs> I keep on expecting to see Anna here in this diner, waiting on tables. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she has a twin that's a brunette. Excuse us, Agent Morgan. We should have made dinner a more uplifting experience. Let's call it a night. Okay. Good night, then. <laughs> yeah, that didn't go too well. What with my stories and reminiscing. Hmm. Did look like a pretty nice burger, though, to be honest. And I suppose my hunger level's, you know, through the roof again, right? So, that's good. Uh, okay. Yeah, there you go. Right, so, yeah, I suppose we are just now heading back. So let's see if we can find the car. There we are. And let's go home. Or at least, what I'm going to be calling home for the foreseeable future. There we go. Yep, okay, I'm gonna... There you go, I'm gonna indicate and everything. It's I'm doing this right. Check it out. Yeah, I'm actually trying. Okay, stop it. <laughs> Just go straight through the crossroads, yeah, okay. I'm gonna go back down here. Uh, there is a way out of this place, isn't there? Oh, yeah, talk. By all means, talk. Zach, we can take a rest if you're tired. What? Oh, is that it? Oh, what? Uh, okay. I guess he's used up all of his stories for this day. Maybe we're gonna get another selection tomorrow. There you go. I think it was a fairly productive day, all things considered. Probably could have done a few things a little better. I probably could have used my time a little better. Probably didn't need to sleep in the shed, but... Oh well. I'll be sleeping in that nice, lovely bed that Polly set up for me. Ooh, two wheels again, oh my god. Probably should learn to brake. Hmm. Speaking of which, there's a handbrake if I use space, isn't there? Fuck! Sorry! I didn't damage myself! Okay. Oh, okay, yeah, that, that is one way to turn, I suppose. <laughs> I kind of want to see what will happen if I'm on two wheels and I do that. I'm sure I'll get my chance. Right, yeah. Oof. I need to, uh, to find some more fuel stations or get some jerry cans, put them in the uh, put them in the trunk or something, because my fuel does go down pretty damn quick. A weather doll. Okay. Is this going to be my daily report? Back to HQ? Okay then, Zach. Hmm. Let's go back over our progress. Okay, let's do that. First the victim. Anna's death. She was found hanging from a tree in the forest. She was cut open with a knife from her chest down to her stomach. Okay. That was the direct cause of death. The strangulation marks and skull fracture were caused after death. Her tongue was also bit off, and I found something inside her mouth. Yeah, that red... Do you remember what that was, Zach? It's like a red seed, by the looks of it. It wasn't the... Yeah, there you go, a red seed. It wasn't the first one you found, either. That's right. We found the same red seed in her mouth. According to Emily, it was raining when Anna was killed, mm -hmm. but traces of tears were still evident on her face. Which means the perpetrator killed Anna under a roof in the lumber mill, right. and then carried her body into the woods after it stopped raining. We found numerous important pieces of evidence at the site of the crime. A total of four things. Yep. 
Knee prints in the grass. A wood chip with metal dust. A photo of a man with a tattoo on his back and... One other thing. What was the other thing? Do you remember what that was, Zach? Was it related to the stiletto heels? It must have been. Uh, the bright red raincoat? Bondage fetish restraint. No, stiletto heel. I think. That's right. Yes. A broken stiletto heel. Okay. Aligning this with the other evidence suggests that two people came into contact with Anna's body prior to it being discovered by us. Hmm. Those being the perpetrator who killed Anna and Miss Stiletto Heel. There is also the possibility that a third party carried Anna to the woods. That means we could be dealing with three people. Maybe it's not Diane, maybe it's Carol. Two or three people. Or both. In any case, Miss Stiletto Heel may have vital information. We need to find her next. Right. We didn't use forensic methods, but we're still closing in on the criminal. <sighs> have I forgotten anything? Ah, of course. The marks on her hand tell us that Anna was gripping something when she died. Right, yeah. Do you remember that, Zack? I do. What do you think she was holding on to? Well, we don't know precisely, do we? Uh, round object, a red wig, or a... Well, yeah, some mysterious round object. That's right. A round object. The marks on her hand suggest a piece mark. Hmm. The man in the photo, found in the woods, had a tattoo of an upside-down piece mark on his back. These two could well be related. But we don't know for sure. Not yet. Next, the town folk. A few are worthy of special attention. Carol McLean, the singer and bar owner. She's Thomas's sister. She's a heel wearer. Then there's Nick Cormack, the owner of the diner. Right. Both of them seem to be hiding something. Sure. There's Diane, the owner of the art gallery, who's out of town. Yeah, we need to talk to her. Then we have problematic, old, rich, and eccentric Harry. Both will be tough to crack. Well, we just have to go one by one. I've been thinking. One of the biggest rewards here is the fantastic food. Hmm. Enjoying food is cultural, and yet it's also a bit uncivilized. It's interesting how good food motivates me to work harder during investigations. <laughs> oh, and on Emily's back, it was strange to me. What? Hey, don't take that the wrong way, Zach. I wasn't getting all <laughs> excited or anything. But it did make me feel strange. Nostalgic and sad almost. Really? That's different. It's starting to rain. I think this case may take a while. I think you might be right. Ellie! Let's have Ellie! Yeah. I'll eat later! You'll eat right now, young lady. You need to listen to your mother. I want to hear the rest of the story. Eat your lunch, then take a nap. Then I'll tell you the rest. But I want to hear it now. There's no need to rush things. You must live your life at the pace that is right for you. So, who is the guy that's telling this story? I thought it may have been like a really old York to begin with, but now I'm not so sure. The plot thickens. There you go. Alright, well I've just finished dinner. <laughs> Five hours in total. Wow, okay. Well, there you go. Not bad, eh?
Did I get extra money for that? Of course I did. 8890. Not too bad if I don't say so myself. Well, this is where I'm going to save, and this is where I'm going to say thank you very much for watching this part of Deadly Premonition. Next time we'll wake up and we'll continue the investigation. Seems like we've got a few places to visit and a few people to see. A few more secrets to unveil. See you then. Can you go through fences? No, no you can't. Okay, you can, you know, damage your car a little bit though. Call for someone? Doesn't really sound like you're calling for someone, honestly, but okay. Okay. Jack's changed. They like it when I put it in and they like it when I pull it out. Nice. Hey, it's open. And hey, look at me, I'm a dick, parking over three spaces. <laughs> Country ham, turkey sandwich. That is an expensive sandwich, what the fuck? Who later made Forrest Gump. That's also a masterpiece, of course, but we'll discuss that another time. Am I peeking again? I'm peeking again. Right, this is getting a little bit creepy, to be honest, York. Great. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, park responsibly for once. You can't just stroll into a chef's kitchen. Well, I just did. All I can really see is that coffee over there. Can I go grab that? When purple. Me and Zach, we know what we're doing. Mmm. Kind of. All sort of robotically staring, my god. Oh god, you three must be brothers, you're triplets or something, what the fuck? Emily, what's going on? Uh... Everyone thinks he's some kind of weirdo, <laughs> but I don't think so at all. Isn't he just People like three... People don't understand yeah. <laughs> why he's in the... <laughs> Always start with the badge. I'm U.S. Special Agent Francis York Morgan. <laughs> he's worse than I'm Phoenix Wright with that badge. The we had our fair share of cases, but just the regular stuff. Whistling. A high school kid shoplifting from the 